In the previous video, I showed you a little bit with buttons and forms. If you remember when I said but dot, I get all these events, so many events. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Well, those aren't events, but the lightning bolts are events. Okay, all the lightning bolts make events. All right. Well, if you notice, I'm only using click or mouse move. I'm not using all of the events. All right? Very rarely would I use any of the events, to be honest. But each event has its purpose, and sometimes you need it. But most of the times, you don't need all those events. But if you think about it, before when I made um, class, let's just go back to a contrived example: cow, and then public event event handler moo okay this delegate reference or actually the backing field which the compiler privatizes go watch the previous video if you need a refresher the backing field is four bytes for this event okay and I'm gonna do moo and let's do walk and we can get even very very uh, granular here I can say begin walking you know and that would fire right when they begin walking and then walk would fire every once in a while while they're walking and then let's do another event let's say end walking and you'll see you'll see a lot of structures like this they give you this is another design pattern-ish kind of thing they call it a hook they're allowing you to hook into various stages of when an object changes state but anyway all right so there's four bytes and there's four bytes and there's four bytes and there's four bytes and you know we can make this even worse we can say begin walking let's do sleeping and sleeping and whew, yeah it's gonna there we go sleeping and then of course we forgot to begin mooing right we need begin moo and uh let's do uh, end moo and so hopefully you get the idea that I could have lots and lots of events just like the button I showed you earlier has lots and lots of events well think about it most of these go unused most of the time yet each one takes four bytes four bytes four bytes four bytes four bytes four bytes because they are delegate references and references are four bytes generally which is a lot of wasted space, especially if I have thousands and thousands of cows in my simulation. So we need a way to get around that wasted space. All right? And this is, this is when the uh, add and remove trick that I showed in a previous video for events, over, or implementing your own add and remove instead of allowing the compiler to do it for you. That's when this comes in handy. So let's go down here. I'm going to say add and remove. Now remember, Move. This is now just code. There's no reference behind it. Yes, I could make a private uh, event handler uh, begin moo, a backing reference for it, and then down in here I'd say begin moo plus equals value, and down here we'd say begin moo minus equals value. I could do that. But this really doesn't gain anything for me. It's it's just I just added the four bytes in. I need a way to be able to store events or subscribers specifically. I need a way to sub to store those subscribing delegate references on demand. All right, and this this is when implementing add and remove explicitly uh, is a good thing. Remember, this is code and. Code is stored once per class type, and so it's not like when I new up an instance of a cow, I'm newing up all this code. No, this code only exists once, and then all cows use it. All right. If you think about about it, technically every method is static. It just the only difference is whether you have a an argument or not, or a uh a, a this argument. But but uh anyway, this code only exists once. So I did save a little bit of room there by saying, well, if I have a thousand cows, I'm not going to have four bytes for each one. Instead, we'll just share this common code. But now I need a way, again, on demand, to be able to store the subscribers. So I'll show you how we do that. Uh, there's a few ways you can you can do this. I'm just going to do it with a dictionary. There's, uh, there's probably some built uh, data structures out there that are better for this. But what I want to do is I want to store uh, a dictionary. All right, dictionary. And this dictionary is going to map strings to event handlers event handler I'm gonna call it subscribers okay now I've taken up a little bit of room for a dictionary you know we could go and look at the members of dictionary here and, and figure out how much room that is but but really I bet it's trivial compared to zillions and zillions of wasted bytes for one for one reference for every event 
Okay? And then when they say add, I'm going to put a string in here. Oh, we forgot our semicolon. Semicolon. Let's put a string in here. String. Uh, I'm going to say, let's make it const. Const string begin moo key gets, and then this is arbitrary what you put out here. If you want to put something intuitive, you can. Let's just begin moo. Uh, and then down here in add, I'm going to say, okay, you want to add? I'm going to say uh, subscribers. Well, there's a little caveat with dictionaries. Dictionaries either have, uh, uh, you just can't index into them if there's not a not an existing value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if subscribers uh, dot contains key uh, begin moo key if there's already a subscriber, that's what I'm saying, then subscribers sub begin moo key plus equals value. Else subscribers, oopsie, subscribers dot add begin moo key value. Okay, and I, I, the only reason I'm writing this is is because I'm using a dictionary. If if I try to use the indexing operator here with a plus equals, and plus equals will read and write using the, these brackets, it'll explode saying, "Hey, there's nobody there. If if there if there's not an entry for this string, let's begin moo key, then I'll get an exception. I'm trying to avoid that. So if there's already a chain in there, let's just add on to the chain. Else, it's the first subscriber. So we're going to add the key and the value. But notice, if this code never runs which most likely it won't. I'm not sure how many people are going to be interested in my cow beginning to moo. All right? If it never runs, I don't waste any space for this cow instance. I just save that four bytes. Now, obviously, this is a little bit of a headache to do all this, but but hopefully you get the right idea. The idea here. The remove is the remove is going to be the similar. I'm going to say uh, uh, first of all, subscribers. Well, first of all. If subscribers dot count, if there's nobody in there and they're trying to remove somebody that's not even in there, I'm just going to return, forget about it. Uh, else, actually, and I can't do count because that checks every single one of these events. So we just we just want to make sure. Hey, if it uh, contains, uh, if it doesn't contain a key, I'm going to put a not out here. If it doesn't contain the key for the begin moo, and that's why I made it a constant string, is because I knew I would use it in several spots. You can see Visual Studio is highlighting all the places I'm, I'm using it. If it doesn't contain the begin moo key, then return. There's no subscribers, and they're trying to remove something that's not there anyways. Okay? Uh, else, uh, subscribers, sub begin moo key minus equals value. And then down here, there's a good chance that if they were the only subscriber to the begin moo event, then then th th this is going to null out my my subscribers. I'll have an entry for begin moo key, but it's going to be null. Now, do I care about that? Do I not? You know, I probably don't care because then, well, this logic wouldn't work out. Let's let's be consistent. If there's nobody in there, we're going to pull them out and then save the RAM anyways. That's the whole reason we're writing this add and remove. So. If subscribers um, sub begin moo key, if that's null, then subscribers, we need to remove that key null value uh, entry out of it. So subscribers dot remove begin move moo key. Okay, so, so there we go. A lot of logic. I know that was kind of a headache, but a lot of logic to uh, save four bytes for this one delegate reference. But but you notice, th this is going to add up, especially if I have several cows, this is going to add up. You know, I, I should be smart and factor this logic out. Okay, in fact, let's just, let's do that. Um, I'm going to make it private. Let's say, void, uh, add subscriber, subscriber, uh, and it's going to take a string key, and a what is it? It's an event handler. Event handler subscriber. Okay. And I probably actually should check for null here up in here, but lots of little logic gotchas things we could do. I'm gonna take this code for the add 
put it down in here and then now I'm gonna say add subscriber and it's going to be the begin move key uh, and value okay and then string I gotta replace this right here but then you can hopefully visualize that for every add for every single one of these events I'm just going to call add subscriber <laughs> control T to transpose whoops add uh, oh forget it <laughs> my brain's a little burned up right now but anyway you can see I, I could call I could reuse this function or this method now over and over in all the ads and then I could easily factor this out just as well as I did with this one anyway so that's how you can um, save some room with a type that has many, many events. If you only have three or four events, I probably wouldn't go to this work. And you could do something a little more useful than a dictionary. I'm sure there's other data structures out there more useful. But now you get the idea that, that we, we are saving some room. I want to point out, though, that I have const here on my begin move key. And that's for one of two reasons. One, I, I don't want this to change somewhere arbitrarily in my code. That keeps me safe and doesn't allow it to change. But also, const variables are also static. The compiler just makes them static, meaning there's only going to be one instance of this. So yeah, you may think, you know, Jamie, for every key you added, uh, let's see, characters are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 18 bytes just for the characters. Then the string object, I'm sure, has plenty of other stuff in there. It takes up memory. But so I, I just, instead of saving four bytes, I just added a bunch of bytes. But when you think about it overall, since this is static and there's only one string per event, uh, I actually gained a lot. I, I lose a lot in the in the beginning, but if I have 10 zillions of these cows, well, I just saved 4 bytes per cows, and so 10 zillion times 4 is a lot of memory compared to one static string just to handle that. So I'll make the trade-off. So if you only have a few events, don't go to all this headache. If you've got a bunch, then look up and, and, and do something similar to this technique.